What's up everyone? Welcome to this issue of Motive Garage. It's time for part two of our quest for nines with our stock bottom end R32 GTR. <laughs> All right, now before we talk about the car, let's get some shameless promotion out of the way. You can see the car now has a headlight duct with a headlight in it. Uh, that was designed by us and a joint venture with Carbon Plus. You can buy it from our online store, which you can see right here. Uh, and we're gonna have R33 and R34 available at the end of the month as well. And why? Because GDR, you can buy these shirts from our online store as well. Now, in case you're wondering why it's taken so long to get part two of the car out, uh, it's for a couple of reasons, actually. The first one is we've actually had a lot of small issues with the car, uh, some of them due to the car being old, some due to upping the power, and we didn't want to release a feature until we're happy with the results that the car had. And the second one is, well, we've been busy. We've got multiple project cars. We had Drag Battle, GDR Challenge, GDR Festival, Modified Live. We've just moved into our new industrial complex. We're building a studio. There's a lot happening in Jet Multimedia and Motive DVD land, so it's just taken its time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over the entire car and run you through all the issues we've encountered and how well the car's performed with the uh, latest round of upgrades. Now, if you watched our last issue, you saw that we actually had an electrical and a fuel issue and we stopped tuning at 24 PSI. Uh, some further investigation into that actually revealed it was a misfire over 24 pounder boost and we needed to find that problem. We tried a few different coil pack setups and it actually wasn't that. It turned out to be some old wiring, uh, a broken earth behind the engine uh, and we basically had to replace some bits of old wiring loom to get it working again. Once we've done that, any coil pack kit was going to work, but we ended up deciding on Godzilla Motorsports billet coil pack kit. Why did we choose that? Well, pretty simple really, it's proven. The quickest and fastest street GDR in the world, King 32, uses the exact same coil pack kit as this, so therefore we know it's going to handle any power we throw at it. Uh, best thing about the kit is the billet coil pack kit bracket is a work of art. It comes with a wiring loom to either plug into a factory wiring loom or you can get a generic wiring loom that you put in yourself and obviously it comes with the six coils as well. Now with the electrical issue sorted, I wanted to clean out the fuel system to see if that would help, put new filters inside the surge tank and replace the in-tank pump Walbro, uh, its fuel filter as well. So hopefully that was gonna clear it up. Now with the misfire sorted and the fuel system cleaned, the car went back on the dyno at Croydon Racing Development so we could turn up the boost and see what the Garrett GTW 3884 could really make. Now we managed to get to 530 kilowatts, but we did run out of fuel on the dyno. Now with the size injectors that we have, that shouldn't have been an issue. So what we looked at was fuel pressure, and we found that it was dropping off uh, over 30 pound of boost, which means we had to use more injector to compensate, and we maxed out the injectors at 530 kilowatts at the wheels. Now the next step was to find out why our fuel system wasn't delivering enough fuel because on paper it should be able to do it. So we traced all of the wiring in the fuel system and found that we were getting a voltage drop by the time it got to the pumps. So to fix the voltage drop issue, I went complete overkill and rewired the entire fuel system in the car. I ran a whole new power cable from the engine bay that was triple the size. All of the power leads were at least double the size to all of the pumps. Went from two relays to three relays uh, and made sure all the earths were bigger and stronger as well. And after testing, no more voltage drop, so back to the dyno. So back on the dyno at Croydon Racing Developments, the increased voltage in the fuel system meant increased flow, which totally changed the tune, and we had to spend some time mucking around with the tune to get it right again before we could turn up the power. Uh, we were back on track already on 30 pounder boost with nearly 530 kilowatts at the wheels and went to turn it up from there and we encountered our first big breakage on the car. Uh, everyone told us we'd break an oil pump or a rod first, but the first thing that we've broken on this car that is RB26's Achilles heel is a cracked block. Now we weren't too worried about it as it's a surface crack on the outside of the block and it was only dripping a very small amount of water. And you know us, we want to test this thing to destruction, so we kept on going. We jacked up the boost to 35 pounder boost and made 545 kilowatts 
at the wheels. We're making nearly 900 calculated engine horsepower and it's still holding together. The cracked block is not really an issue right now though. It's nothing that a bit of JB Weld can't fix. So with the power turned up, we had to make the decision, do we go to Cootamundra and race in the GTR Challenge, or do we head to the track and try and run a nine? Now we only had one day to pretty much decide on that, so we decided to go to the track. But we probably picked the worst possible night of the year to go to the track. It was over 35 degrees Celsius and over 75% humidity, which was certainly going to rob us of some power. In fact, a lot of cars on the night said they were suffering from probably four to five mile an hour. Guys that normally run 145, we're only running about 140. But stuff it, we decided to run the car anyway. And just like usual, first pass was a PB. <laughs> So on the first run, the car did actually feel a little bit sluggish up top. Uh, part of that might have been the temperature and humidity, which robbed us of some mile an hour. But we also touched the limiter ever so slightly at the top of fourth gear as the old car syndrome kicked in and the taco light wasn't working, so I couldn't see the RPM. Don't worry, it's not a massive excuse. We may have actually popped a shim on that run and lost a little bit of power up top. But the time looked good, so I decided to go back around and give it another shot. <laughs> The second launch felt even better, however what we did discover looking at the footage later is we're actually shifting into second gear before the 60 foot marker. So even if we launched harder, sometimes that wouldn't be reflected in our 60 foot time on our time slip. Now on the second run, tragedy struck, couldn't get into third, looked like I just missed a gear but later on it turned out it actually got a bent selector fork which needs to be fixed. Now after hitting the track we decided to miss taking the car to Cootamundra for GDR Challenge as we didn't want to risk any more damage. So I decided to take it to roll racing at Sydney Motorsport Park. Now I suffered from the same problem that night where the interior lights didn't work, couldn't see the taco, did touch the rev limiter a little bit but the car was absolutely moving. It was fast, especially with the colder air that night. Now after roll racing, we did get a little bit disheartened as when we started the car up, we heard one noise that you really don't want to hear and that is the whine of low compression when it cranks over. We thought we'd killed the engine so we took it back to Croydon Race Developments so we could do an inspection to find out what was actually wrong with the car. So the first thing we did at Croydon Racing Developments was a compression check and we found that four cylinders were low on compression. Now the thing we needed to do was find out why, what had we broken? So we pulled the rocker covers off and we actually found that we had popped not one, not two, not three, but four shims. Why did we pop shims in the car? Well, it's not the first time we've done it and we know why we've done it. When we put the single valve springs in, we decided that we didn't re-shim it just to see how far you could go. However, because we didn't do the shim clearances or upgrade the shims, when you're revving it hard and when you touch the rev limiter, you do risk popping out a shim. And when you pop the shim, the valve doesn't close properly, so you don't get complete compression on the cylinder. In the future, we're obviously gonna to have to fix that and a piece of advice for anyone changing the valve springs, and that is to make sure you get aftermarket shims, get the shim clearances checked, and or even go for a shimless design on the head. We also suggest that if you're gonna do it, skip single valve springs and go straight to double valve springs while you're at it, as there's a lot of work involved, so you might as well do it all at once. So with the shims all back on, we did another compression check, but we did find that number five is still slightly low on compression, which it always has been, and we found some water inside the cylinder which probably tells us that we're starting to lift the head again and we may break a head gasket uh, in the future very soon if we keep pushing the car. Uh, we are gonna put some Nulon head gasket repair into the car and that's gonna match up pretty well with the JB world on the block to try and hold the car together for a little bit longer so we can try and run that nine second pass. 
Now another thing we also notice, we're still having problems with voltage, both at the ECU and at the battery, so we put a new custom made 120 amp alternator into the car, hoping that would fix some problems. It's fixed a couple of them, however we've still got low voltage in a few places, and we are going to be changing the wiring loom over to a wiring specialties wiring loom so that it's all nice and brand new and hopefully solve some of those problems. So our next step from here is we need to get the car back on the dyno at Croydon Racing Developments and see if our JB Weld and head gasket repair is going to hold up and see if cylinder number five can withstand a little bit more abuse so we can try and run that magical nine second pass on a stock bottom end. Oh, hang on a sec. Boys at Croydon have said I've got a delivery and that it's a very, very large box. There's something cool inside. All right, off to the shop, let's go check it out. All right, before we go, we're gonna let you in on a little secret for our next episode of Motive Garage. It's very special. It comes in a big box, let's open it up. So in case you haven't worked it out, it's a PPG six-speed sequential gearbox for our GDR. Now we're going to prove once and for all just how much of a performance increase you can get from one of these bad boys. 